Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. I wanted to go through and uh, make a video explaining very clearly about the axis, the cardiac axis on an ECG and understanding how the axis works. So I'm going to start just by having a look at this diagram. This is the outside of a heart. If we straight uh, strip away the top layer, we can look at the electrical activity inside. So this is a sinoatrial node. Uh, the electrical activity starts here, passes down to the atrial ventricular node, through the bundle of His, left bundle branch, right bundle branch, and into the Purkinje fibers, where it stimulates a good ventricular contraction of the heart. Okay, so the way I want you to think about ECG axis is essentially by s imagining yourself standing on top of uh, the sinoatrial node and you're looking down the direction, the general direction that electrical activity is flowing through the heart. So this direction is the axis of the electrical activity of the heart. Okay. Now if you're standing there looking in that direction, left axis deviation is when the electrical activity is abnormally shifted to your left, okay, so the activity is flowing in that direction instead of that direction, and then so that's left axis deviation, and then right axis deviation is when the electric activity instead of flowing that way is flowing to your right, so that's right axis deviation, okay, so that's a quick and easy way to remember it. Just imagine yourself standing on the sinoatrial node looking in the direction of the electrical activity. Okay, so now let's have a look at how this plays into the ECG. ECGs, for the purpose of the axis, only the limb leads are important. You, you can forget about the chest leads. So there's four limb leads. One sits, sorry, one, one sits on the right shoulder, one sits on the left shoulder, one on the left ankle, and one on the right ankle. So the leads, like 1, 2, 3, AVL, AVF, and AVR, are calculated by looking at the difference in electrical activity between these two, or, or between two of these leads. So for example, electrical activity that moves in the direction from the right shoulder to the left shoulder will be traveling like that and cause a positive rise in lead one because lead one is going in that direction along with electrical activity that direction then lead two is measured from the right shoulder to the left foot so down like that at 60 degrees and lead three is measured from the left shoulder down to the right foot so down like that direction so it's at plus 120 degrees. Okay. Now the normal axis, the normal cardiac axis, is from minus 30 through to 90 degrees. So that is all normal. Okay. So the general electric activity can be traveling in that direction, that direction, that direction. That's all within the normal range. Now when it's rotated out of the normal range, so past minus 30, that's left axis deviation, and then past 90 is right axis deviation. Okay? So quite simple to remember and follow so far. Okay. So how do we calculate from an ECG whether somebody has left axis deviation or right axis deviation? Well, the answer is you look at whether the leads are positive or negative. So, like I said, lead one, for example, is calculated from the electrical difference between these two. If electrical activity is going in that direction, th it's going to be positive because there'll be a, a, a movement of electricity from that side to that side. If electrical activity is traveling at exactly 90 degrees to lead one, so exactly downwards, 
there will be no difference in electrical activity between here and between here. So this is what's called isoelectric. So it will be neither positive or negative. Now if the electrical activity is traveling in that direction, remember this is a right axis deviation, then in fact, generally, there is a negative flow of electricity across lead one. So you'll have a negative value. So let's look at the normal axis, uh, normal ECG. You can see there's positive, uh, lead one is positive. Um, because electricity is flowing in the right direction. Okay, now let's look at lead two. Within the normal axis, uh, you would expect lead two. If it's if it's normal, you would expect lead that would be positive. You would you would get a generally a uh, positive flow from that side to that side. If you're at exactly 90 degrees to lead to, which is the borderline for being uh, a left axis deviation, this would be isoelectric. So 90 degrees is isoelectric because there's neither a positive or a negative flow from the right shoulder to the left ankle. And then if you have a left axis deviation, you'll end up in fact with a net negative direction flow uh, through lead two. So that would be a left axis deviation. So the way to look at this uh, is with this diagram here. So in a normal ECG you would end up with a positive lead one and a positive lead two when you have left axis deviation you end up with a positive lead one but a negative lead two and when you have a right axis deviation you have a negative lead one and usually a positive lead two but this is more sort of isoelectric and a positive lead three so lead, lead three actually you don't need to pay too much attention to for calculating the axis so one easy way to remember this is just this phrase the axis was left to the right one so if you imagine the axis this tells you which one becomes negative in which axis deviation so the axis was left to the right one okay so left to if two is negative it's a left axis deviation if one is negative it's a right axis deviation so the axis was left to the right one okay so the other thing you can work out is by looking at which lead is isoelectric, meaning neither positive nor negative, you can figure out which exactly what the axis is. So if we look at this ECG, for example, now let's say we wanted to calculate whether there was a right or a left, left axis deviation. We'd look at lead one and two. So we can see lead one is positive so that's positive we can see lead to overall is about negative therefore the axis was left to so left axis deviation the right one so we've already calculated that's left axis deviation now we can calculate the exact axis by looking at which one of these leads is isoelectric meaning neither positive nor negative and I would say generally AVR is about isoelectric looking at this diagram here. So if we go back to our diagram here, we decided AVR was isoelectric. Okay. Um, so this was isoelectric. So that means the axis is at exactly 90 degrees to the lead that's isoelectric. Okay. Now we said there was a left axis deviation, so the axis must be going in exactly that direction, 90 degrees from here. 
okay so that's 150 if we uh, add 90 degrees onto that we get minus 60 degrees okay so we know that looking at this exact ECG here one second that the axis of this ECG is 60 degrees minus 60 degrees and we have a left axis deviation so hopefully that clarifies axis of the ECGs a little bit more if you'd like more videos like this uh, you can like and subscribe on YouTube uh, if you'd like more information on the ECG axis and what actually causes a right or left axis deviation please head over to zero to finals.com and there'll be all kinds of notes and uh, diagrams and more videos all about this stuff and further information. So thanks for listening. I uh, hope you enjoy the video and see you next time.